In this lab, we're going to be using an air track to talk about collisions. So we're going to examine the conservation of momentum, and then we're going to verify that momentum is conserved in elastic and inelastic collisions. If you remember from class, we talked about how momentum is conserved if there's no external forces. So in this case, your system is going to consist of two carts, one cart over here, one cart over here, and they're going to come at each other, and in the middle, they're going to collide. And then, depending what's on, if you're uh, in an elastic or inelastic collision, little tongue-tied, they will bounce back, or they will form one big super blob and go some direction. So, remember that we talked about momentum. If we call this cart M1, this cart M2, momentum, P is just equal to mass times velocity, and you add up all of your mass times velocity, remember that this little sign right here means it is a vector. So you're going to have to add these components. So now let's talk about this amazing tool we call an air track. It is right here. And some of you may be thinking, what is this miraculous device? And the answer is, well, what's it look like? And it looks like an air hockey table wrapped around a pole. That's what it is. So what's going to happen? You are going to put these gliders on the air track. Very important, don't put the glider on the track unless it's on. If you put one of these little gliders on this track, it can scratch it. And then your nice air hockey table, which creates a nearly frictionless surface, won't anymore. Second thing I want you to notice if you look right down here, there are two screws. These level the track. If it's not level, you're not going to get the right data. So make sure that you level this using the bottom screws. And then I guess the final thing that we're going to talk about. These right here, these are your photo gates. They collect the data. The glider runs through, hits it, does whatever. And this is what records your data. So please make sure that they're high enough that the glider does not hit it because you don't want that to happen. It's very sad. Um, so let's talk about how you're going to analyze the uncertainty in this lab and move on right to error analysis. Now when we're talking about error analysis in this lab, there are a few places we can get it. And error analysis is going to be a little bit different because we have no clue what's going to happen. I mean, I don't have the uh, figures for this specific rubber band and what its percent loss is. Huh. Is there a way to find it? Well, you bet there is. We wouldn't be in physics lab if we weren't. So if we want to find the error in this rubber band, let's send the card at it. And the card's going to hit. And did you see it? Did you see how the, when the cart was coming in this way, and then it left, that it wasn't going as fast? Why would that be? Wait a minute. I bet this rubber band's the culprit. And you'd be right. So what you're going to do is you're going to construct an error table. And it's going to have your velocity in, your initial velocity. Then it's going to have your velocity final. And then it's going to have, let's cross that F, a percent difference. So when you look at it, you can figure out what velocity did I go in, what velocity was this rubber band well, involved in the collision with, and then you can figure out what would I expect my percent loss of velocity. In fact, let's just call this a percent loss of velocity. Now, it's important because you have no idea what speed it's going to go, what's going to be your best collision. So when you look at this, make sure that you do this for a wide range of numbers. That way you can look at this table and no matter what the collision is, you'll be able to figure out, hey, this is my percent loss. Also, make sure that when you're colliding, you use this rubber band. You went through all the trouble to make this handy-dandy error table. Hate to see it go to waste. So use the same rubber band and put it on the cart. Now let's talk about losses from another pesky little thing. Friction. So your cart is going to go down this track like so. And it's going to pass from one photo gate to another. But the problem is, you don't know how fast it's going. 
So what you're going to do, there are a couple of things that can um, kind of impinge on this. It's nearly frictionless, but you're going to calculate error from friction, and you're going to do this by taking multiple runs, multiple runs at various speeds. So what this looks like, if we saw that video, you run it through, it's going, this photo gate, the initial one, takes its initial speed, this measures its final speed, and you look at the difference, and the loss of that is going to be your loss due to friction. So now that we've got these charts, what do we do with them? Well first, let's look at the relative velocity of the carts. These are the velocities added together, because that's the speed the rubber band thinks it's getting hit at. Um, relative velocity. And if we look, we can actually determine what the best place. Now if we look, friction losses go down as speed goes up. Rubber band losses go up, and if I look for the place with the minimum error, I'll take a look at it. Where do you think it is? Well, I think that it looks like about 0.5 is the best. So I'm going to select collisions with a relative velocity of 0.5. So now we've got this. I add these two percents and it looks like I can be off or have a six percent margin of error. So now if I'm looking at what to do with this margin of error, let's look at our initial momentum equation. And when we look at this, we see that our initial momentum should equal our final momentum. But if I set that either, I'm comparing something to what should be zero, which would be the difference in these two sides. Remember the force table? Remember dividing by zero being a bad thing? So we're going to use the same trick. We're going to pretend we don't know the final velocity of one of the carts, and we're going to solve for this. And then hopefully, this final velocity that I calculate is within 6%, 2% plus 4%, for a collision at a relative velocity of 0.5 meters per second. And then it's all about comparing the final velocity we calculate to the final velocity measured by Logger Pro. And hopefully this value is within 2%. So it's just like the force table. Pretend you don't know something, solve for it. Hopefully it's within this 6% of the expected value. Now let's talk about the apparatus a little bit. Now let's take a look at this. What we have here, you are going to perform multiple trials. And the reason you're doing this is to make sure you get a good run at one of those velocities that you're hoping to hit from your error table. Now if we look at this, we can tell that this cart is set up for an elastic collision. You can tell because when you hit a rubber band, you bounce. So what you need to do, you need to know the mass of this cart, or glider, sorry, mass of the glider. You also need to add the mass of each of these attachments. And lucky for us, each attachment has a mass of 10 grams. Side note. Make sure that you add a mass on this side, a 10 gram attachment on this side, and a 10 gram attachment on this side. Otherwise your cart's lopsided and it drags. Then what you're going to do is you're going to add one of these 50 gram masses to each side for a total of 100 extra grams on one glider. And now let's take a look at the inelastic collision. Next, we're going to look at inelastic collisions, point of safety. This is sharp, so don't, um, you know, touch it or put your hand in there or your partner's hand. Um, so go very, very slow, Looney Glide. The second part, this is just a wax. It's got a wax little hole in there. So these will slide and they'll hit together and they'll stick. So this is inelastic collisions. So before it was elastic, this is inelastic. So when you're running your inelastic collision, it looks like this. This is the one with the extra mass. Key point, it moves really slow. So when you're doing your extra mass, make sure they collide near a gate. The other thing to note is stop the timer when one goes through. So stop after one cart goes through. Those are pretty important tips. So collide next to a gate when you have the extra mass. When you don't have the extra mass, it doesn't really matter. But when you do have the extra mass, definitely collide near a gate. And also, stop it after one cart goes through. So let's talk about how we're going to collect all this data. You are using graphical analysis, so it's all on computer. 
this photo gate distance, this is the cart length. It has an infrared sensor and it knows how far, well, how wide the cart is. So it, the beam gets blocked, it starts a timer. Beam gets unblocked, start, um, ends the timer. And it calculates these velocities right here. Gate two, gate one. Now you will notice there are no negatives. So you have to assign positive and negative values. Otherwise your momentum won't, won't come out. Now again, this is because all graphical analysis knows is how long this thing's blocked. So if I have a red cart going this way initially, blue cart coming in, I would pick this direction would be my positive direction. Then after they collide, blue cart's going this way, red cart's going this way, and we can see that their velocity, well their speeds, the sign switched. So let's say that red goes in positive, comes out negative, blue goes in with a negative speed, comes out positive, or speed in the negative direction. So you have to account for the signs. This is really important. I get a lot of weird numbers, and the majority is just because the signs are off. So be careful. A couple major points. Collide the carts very slowly. As silently as possible. If you can hear it, it is too fast. So, they are quiet. Very quiet. Alright, if you hit, you can hear it, you're losing energy of sound. It's not what we want to do. Second part, and I see this every year, make sure you use the relative velocity to calculate your error. So if you're colliding and you have one going at 3.5, and by the way, 3.5 is incredibly fast, and your other one is 3.5, your relative velocity goes to 7 meters per second, which is too fast because it's not quiet, as we mentioned. Now, these velocities and this error, this uncertainty we're talking about, remember to use your table that you made at the beginning of the lab from your prelim experiments. You used it. You made them. So, you know, might as well get your money's worth out of them. So to wrap this up, you're looking at momentum conservation, which says momentum initial equals momentum final. But remember, we can't compare to zero, so we're solving for the final velocity of cart 2. Solve for V to F. Pretend you don't know it. And then, hopefully, the value you calculate using this formula, your momentum conservation, falls within the value you read. Also, you're asked to find how perfectly an elastic collision is in your elastic collision. So what you're asked is to calculate your coefficient of restitution, which equals your relative velocity, relative velocity out over relative velocity in. And this is just to say how perfect of an elastic collision was this. If V is zero, then the cards are moving together and it's inelastic. So you're calculating that. And final, make sure you do multiple runs. And that does it, and I will see you in lab.